And I am back already with another update already because there's a new firmware update for the Fat Shark Waxnail Avatar system. So I reviewed this initially last week, finished the edit late Friday evening, and considering the fact that it was 4th of July weekend, I figured I would just wait until Tuesday, July 5th to put out the video. And of course, Fat Shark puts out an update on like July 4th, and I was super drunk, so there was just no way that I was going to find out about this. So I put out that video not knowing there was already a firmware update, which to me is great news because you always want companies to put out firmware updates and continue improving the system as fast as possible because it helps out you and I. So we're going to do two things today. We're going to test that out to see if it improved the detail rendering issues that I called out because it bothers me. And the second thing we're going to do today is see whether or not I can fly using the USB to HDMI output of the Fat Shark goggles onto an external monitor. Now you might be wondering why would you do that? Well, A, there's just some people that can't fly within goggles, so it'd be interesting to find out if this is a viable option. And B, for professional cinematography in the heavy lift world, it's very customary to fly off of two monitors. One off of what the FPV camera sees, and a second one to see what the HD camera is recording. And this really just ensures the best possible control to make sure that you've got something framed right. So we're going to do those two tests and then we'll come back. We'll do an unscientific test of trying to measure the latency coming out of the monitors and then you guys can make your decisions. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and we are flying through uh, some grass with a lot of like trees and uh, some pretty decent detail here. And I, yeah, this is definitely, this is definitely a lot better. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so in my last video, my initial impression was that when you're not moving, the picture quality looked just as good as DJI. But as soon as you started moving and there was a lot of detail in the picture, uh, that quickly started to fall apart. And that's where DJI kind of excelled. But now, now this, this is... This is fantastic. I, I almost want to say this is even better than DJI now. I think I'm going to retract my original statement from my last video and say that this is really good. Really, really good. So we got some high detail areas over here. It's rendering them just great. Grass was something that I had a problem with, but I am barely seeing any issues and we're going at a pretty good speed here. All right, so the other thing that I noticed was, uh, you know, when you go to like trees and branches, it was having a hard time re resolving that, but this looks like it's not struggling at all. Granted, I'm not moving at a very fast speed, uh, but with the previous firmware, this would have been kind of sketch. And yet here I am now doing it without a problem. All right, I'm gonna bring it back Let's do the test flying uh, out of the monitor. But good job, Fat Shark. Wow, that, that, that didn't take very long. I know the other reviewers, uh, Steele and Bardwell, was talking about the same uh, detail rendering issues. They were describing it as blockiness. I absolutely was experiencing that, as you can see from the last video. And uh, within just like a week, uh, Fat Shark heard it. They put out a new, Fat Shark or uh, walks now. I still don't know what's what, who's doing what at this rate, at this time. Uh, but that is a huge improvement. Uh, All right, so next up we have the uh, flying out of the USB to HDMI output of the Fat Shark Dominator goggles. Now here's what I like about this system that makes it so much better than DJI's solution for this, right? All you gotta do is this, buy this cable, USB-C on one side, HDMI on the other side. There is no $700 smart box or smart controller, I'm sorry, that you got to buy. There is no hacking of an Android tablet in order to get the monitor output. You just buy this cable. I think this was $15, $16 on Amazon. And the best part with it being HDMI for a professional setting, you could just plug this into any HDMI monitor and now you've got it being outputted to something like this. Totally forgot to also mention the other amazingly great use of this feature is if you wanted to do some type of live streaming. So get yourself a capture card, something like this, that same USB to HDMI cable, 
and now you could live stream your flights to your favorite streaming platform. All right, back to the edit. So first thing I'm gonna do is I've got this powered on already. I'm gonna plug this guy in through there. We're gonna plug this into here and we should get a picture. There it is. All right, let's go take it outside and see what this is like. Let's see if I can see if I can fly this. So we're gonna have the same settings, 720p, high frame rate, nothing else has changed, 700 milliwatts on the transmission power. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, I mean. Oh, it's a little weird, it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should fly it a little slower. Just to kind of kind of get used to this. All right. I mean, I could definitely feel the latency, but it's not impossible to fly it. My guess is that uh, heavy lift pilots will probably be fine using this. Uh, normal FPV people normally like used to flying off of like box box goggles or an external monitor. You can do it, but I definitely wouldn't want to do anything aggressive. Out of curiosity, Ryan, this is this is your first time seeing this avatar system. Granted it's on a monitor, but like what do you what do you think about this right now? This looks really clean. It looks super clean. I mean, I, I saw some of the reviews before and I saw that it was, um, there was like that smearing issue, but I don't see that at all now. There's a lot of detail in the grass. Yeah, and there's it, actually a lot of detail. It looks a lot like, like the DJI system. Would you say that it's better? I would be the wrong person to ask about that, but it looks really, really clean. Like I mean, super clean. it looks really clean. The detail is back. I really like it. I also want to point out that I'm starting to get used to this latency. Um, which is typically the case. I uh, usually like at first you're just like, oh my gosh, this is not viable. And then you give it like 30 seconds to a minute, or at least that's how long it takes me. And now I'm like, okay, this is cool. You know, I, I, I wouldn't race with it. Uh, I wouldn't do anything like super crazy, but this is doable. This, I think this is doable. Is it as good as flying within the goggles? Obviously not. But this is, uh, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. So basically, if you're coming from analog and you're used to flying off of monitor, maybe, like I'm, I'm all right with this. I wouldn't do any kind of like crazy close proximity bando bashing with it. But if you're more of a casual flyer that likes to just cruise, um, this is probably a, a, a workable solution. It's gonna come up to you, I think, at the end of the day. Um, but for the other demographic that I'm doing this test for, which is for like the pro heavy lift people, right? Like Alta X carrying like a crazy 20 pound payload or whatever. I would say this is probably doable because in that scenario, you're not doing this type of close, uh, you know, critical, accurate, precise type of flying. I think this might work, man. The only thing that's gonna suck is you have this goggles that you have to put onto your rig, which I'll, I'll put a picture in on what those rigs looks like. But this might work out for, for heavy lift people. So, all right guys, back in the studio. Here's how we're gonna do this unscientific latency test. I've got the drone right here in front of me. I've got the external monitor connected through the Fat Shark goggles like you saw me test it earlier outside. What we're gonna do is use a high frame rate camera, which is gonna be this guy right here, which can do as high as 960 frames per second. And then I'm going to use the LED light on my iPhone to capture how long it takes for the light to show up here, right? And that'll be frame number one. And then count how many frames it takes to get over to this monitor, at least when it starts to register the light turning on. And however many frames that is should be roughly the equivalent to milliseconds because in 960, right? So one over 960 is roughly 0 0.00104 something something uh, milliseconds. So shooting in 960 will make the math super easy because however many frames it is, is exactly one millisecond. All right, so here is a sample video of one of the tests that I ran. 
to keep things consistent, I basically started my count from the first time that I see even just a little bit of light get emitted from the cell phone. And then as soon as I see a little bit of light uh, change onto the monitor. And I did this test six times just so that I can have uh, a pretty decent sample size. And as you can see, basically the average of the latency coming out to the monitor is roughly 36, 37 milliseconds. So that is definitely not super high um, and this probably explains why I was able to get used to it uh, within about 30 seconds to a minute of flying. I think obviously this is going to come down to your personal preference if you think 37, 38-ish milliseconds is something that's going to bother you or not for your style of flying. Um, but I also want to point out the very first time I ran this test, um, I counted 32 frames or roughly 32 milliseconds, which I feel like is a little bit of an outlier. Um, so just something worth pointing out. So to summarize this up, um, first let's just go back to the firmware update. I think that dot five update was spectacular. It made the image quality and the whole detail rendering issue basically go away, uh, at least for me in the short bit of flying that I did. Um, and I think it's great that Fat Shark slash Walk Snail, I think it's fantastic that they are able to see and recognize this as a problem within the community and immediately come out with a, uh, with a, with a solution. I'm actually going to step back now and say that I think, I think it might be a little bit better looking than DJI. And mind you, we haven't even tested the high bitrate mode yet. And I'd be especially curious if there's such thing as a 1080p high bitrate mode on this avatar system. That, if there's that, I think that is going to be very huge for people that like to do long range cruising. Um, and, you know, for me personally, you know, again, I, I don't think I would swap over to the system because I'm already heavily invested in DJI. But if I wasn't and I saw this on this latest firmware, Ooh, that's kind of uh, that's something to think about because the goggles are a lot smaller, which I like. The beta flight canvassing mode is a huge plus. So I don't know. I, I think the only thing now that I need to test um, that would give me kind of the deciding factor is how well the system tolerates RF noise, right? So it's very common for us FPV freestylers to be flying at a bando or just really at an area where there's a lot of Wi-Fi. RF noise is pretty high. Curious to see how it handles that. DJI has been pretty good at that. Um, and then from a professional setting standpoint, being on set and productions, that's like an RF nightmare. They got Teradex, Microlights, all kinds of things transmitting. And uh, it is a problem for DJI. So I'd be curious to see how the Fat Shark system reacts in that similar type of environment. If, if it handles that even just a little bit better, then I would say that for professional use, this fat shark system might be the way to go. So only time will tell folks. Um, stay tuned. We'll get some more videos going out on this. So that'll do it. Um, my name's Tommy. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.